Okay, this is our 47 kilowatt magnetizer project, um, which is in order to complete another project. Um, Alright, let's go through some of the parts we've got here. These large size heavy gauge coils you can see uh, from an old arc welder. Uh, this was the primary coil. As you can see, it's made from a square uh, wire. It's actually aluminium. Um, this was the low current side of the welder, which is a, a larger gauge square wire. And this one here was from the high current side of the welder, which I've unwrapped a bit. As you can see, it is a very large gauge square wire. Um, we're going to be using this for our um, larger um, flux path mag mag magnetizer and um, this smaller gauge one we're going to use for our pot magnetizer. So we're going to have two in the one unit. Um, these are our relays we will be using, big heavy ones. Um, and that there is our heavy duty 48 volt 30 amp battery charger and our power source is going to be 24 of these 2 volt cells to give us 48 volts um, each one of those cells is capable of uh, 1000 amps so we will probably end up uh, with more than 48 volts but um, we'll be sticking to the 48 volt. We'll be closer to about 52 to 54, I would think. Um, and we'll have our 48 volts at our 1,000 amps going through our uh, coils once we make them. They will be wrapped around this large solid steel bar. Uh, there will be two of them facing each other and we're going to set up the flux path um, via two of those bent at right angles um, and going down through our laminated core here one will be fixed the other one will be adjustable so as I can adjust the uh, spacing between the uh, north and south flux path and um, our item we wish to magnetize will be placed between that. So um, that's pretty much it. And of course, this will just be wound as our pot core, um, as in air core fashion. This one here, probably not going to use for the time being. Being aluminium, it is very easy to straighten out. Um, the darker colour you see on there is. Um, what they varnish it with or the lacquer they put on after they've wound it and there is a lighter colour lacquer also which is what the um, aluminium wire starts off with to insulate it it is very robust I've um, cut a piece of this off and twisted it backwards and forwards many times and the light stuff does not come off so uh, hopefully we're not going to have any shorts when we rewind it but it does straighten very easy being aluminium so it'll be relatively easy to work with so that's going to be our uh, 48 kilowatt uh, magnetizer so um, of course we'll have one for our large unit one for our small unit um, I do have two of these diodes which we'll be putting across the coil so as we don't get any uh, flyback shooting back through our um, contacts when we when the um, contacts begin to open again. Um, they'll only be on for a split second so our 48 kilowatts will be a quick pulse through the device. <coughs> Why do we need to make magnets? Well, for our next project as you can see here, um, this is a dummy one I machined up just to see how hard it was going to be achieved. Of course this is only plexiglass uh, machining our soft iron will take a little longer but um, 
if you look at that carefully, I'm guessing you might be able to work out as to whose design this actually is as far as the rotor goes, but of course I will be doing it differently than what Jim has done his. Um, so we'll see how that turns out, but we've got to make this, um, replicate this in steel, we're going to have to take it off the shaft, put in the magnetizer and magnetize it. So this rotor is actually going to be the magnet rather than carrying the um, flux, magnetic flux, um, giving it a path to follow, this is actually going to be the magnet itself. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I do have uh, a couple of old um, snap magnetos and um, an old telephone generator where the horseshoe magnets are very weak. So hopefully I'll be able to bring them back to life a bit with this setup. So that is our setup. Um, we're going to have one hell of a big primary coil. Um, I don't know the resistance on that. My multimeter will not give me a reading. It just says zero, zero, zero. So I'm uh, guessing it's the resistance across that coil is less than 0.01 ohms. Um, this here, our battery charger and the large battery bank we're going to be having um, I only have six cells there at the moment, there is uh, 24 all up, I haven't bought the others in yet but um, they're actually from an old electric cart that, and uh, I've got two of these carts, they were given to me and uh, because the batteries were dead and they're going to cost too much to replace the batteries I basically got them for um, the electric motors that were in them, the DC motors for my electrical uh, electric vehicle project but uh, when I looked inside the batteries they were bone dry so um, after about four litres of acid each and um, a couple of hours on the big charger these things started to take about 15 amps and after about eight hours they were fully charged to about 2.4 volts They've been sitting for um, a couple of months now and they still have 2.4 volts across them and a shitload of current as I found out when I went to undo them with my spanner I um, shorted the positive and the negative terminal out across the uh, whole 48 volts and my spanner simply blew to pieces current is not going to be a problem with those batteries uh, time they switch on it's got to be very fast so as we don't start reversing the effect uh, due to eddy currents when we make our magnet too long on time can actually um, start depolarizing the magnet so um, there's going to be some experimenting going on but um, first we're going to make the large one and I uh, have to cut some of this solid shaft up, stick it in the lathe, clean it up and um, take it to work and put it in the bender and bend it because my bender will not bend inch and a half solid shaft so uh, we'll get that um, all done and made in the next video and uh, we'll put all this together I'll get the rest of the battery bank in all sorted uh, we've got some fairly heavy cable down there that so should be able to handle a thousand amps at a quick pulse and um, we'll stick some bits of uh, steel in there and see what happens see if we can actually make some decent magnets alright thanks for watching guys so uh, that's just a heads up on what's coming up and um, this is old school stuff but uh, very reliable 30 amps at uh, 48 volts is not a bad battery charger at all. Alright, we'll see you uh, next video when we start our build. Cheers.